you don't go into a Chris Nolan movie and just hear the sound. You go into a Chris Nolan movie and you feel the sound. And if you want to say there's a method to his madness, there is to the way Chris operates. When I walked in to read the script, I had to go to Universal Studios and you go in a private room and they sat you down and, and then they say, here's the script. I look at this script and says, this is a huge script. I mean, uh, how many days we have to shoot this? You know, roughly approximately 187 pages. I thought, oh my God, this is a big deal. And then Tom Hayes slipped and produced and other people were, was saying to me, Willie, this is your show. You know, it's a dialogue movie. It's on you, you know. And I said, okay, you, you know, nothing we can't do. I've done it before. So, but you have to gear mentally what you have to do in a short amount of time. After all these years, we certainly feel the comfort and the freedom to be able to communicate as a team. And it is a case-by-case -case basis. So it's hard to say on a broad level, what do you learn when you're in the room with Chris Nolan? It's like, I learn a million things on every movie. And there are challenges within that dynamic on every movie. How loud is too loud? You know, how long do we sustain loud? Is it too long? Uh, I don't know, is it? You know, or how long are we quiet? It's the same thing. It's, a, you know, it's how to use the dynamic range. I feel like we're all so lucky to be part of Chris's team and every film is completely different. You know, you've got a front row seat to one of the most brilliant filmmakers ever. And there's always a, a dozen instances where he wants to do something. And I think that is never going to work. <laughs> and it always does work. And it just is always so impressive to me. He has, he has a great sound sensibility. Again, I often disagree with him in the moment. And then I look at the film a week later or two weeks later and yep, he nailed it. That was, that was the right decision for sure. Chris is very attuned to the story he wants to tell, right? And so our job is obviously to help him tell that story. And no one does a better job than Richard King at that. And, you know, there are times when Chris will call an audible. Like there was a time when we were in Los Alamos, Oppenheimer is standing out in front and they're loading the bomb. They've loaded it onto the truck and then the truck is, is going away down the road. And we're hearing the chains back, you know, bang against the side of the truck. And it was a wooden truck with these metal chains. And we heard them longer and louder than we probably should have. But, you know, that was Chris's way of telegraphing the impending doom that was coming. I don't think that it's in his head from the beginning because he's kind of discovering it too as the process goes along, but he knows the goal. It's not an intellectual process with him. It's, it's very much a intuitive gut level approach where he's searching for these feelings in himself. And I think it is a process and we really don't have in-depth conversations about sound in, in the theoretical sense those conversations begin to come about when I've made some sounds and given them to him and we have something to talk about and a point of reference to bounce off of and he'll let me know when I'm on the right track when I'm on the wrong track it's a really interesting process it's not a linear process it's it, there's a lot of experimentation a lot of trial and error but that's the fun of it I was homesick um emotionally immature, troubled by visions of a hidden universe. Certainly, if you're talking about the can you feel the music sequence, when Oppie is a young man and a young mind and he's really beginning to wrap his head around the quantum universe. How do you communicate that through music and through a mix? There is a beautiful musical build to that particular piece. Me working with my co-sound designer, Randy Torres, who did a lot of the work on these as well, just cleared our minds and just trying to live up to the power of the images. They're very dramatic images. And a lot of that drama, I think, comes from the fact that they're photographed effects that the effects department, who started quite early on the film, devised. Our challenge was to do justice to the, to the images. How's your mathematics? Not good enough for the physicist he wants to be. Algebra is like sheet music. The important thing isn't can you read music, it's can you hear it. 
Can you hear the music, Robert? Yes, I can. To see and feel Oppie's understanding of what Niels Bohr is saying, to go from sheepish student through and grasp the inspiration that leads right into the music that plays the growth and the insight and that inspiration to the point where Oppie is ready to really do something different. You feel that as an audience member and it's magic. I imagine that the, these these band shots were depicting the particle wave duality of light and of particles. And we wanted each one to have its own unique flavor and be in sync with the warbles of the bands of light. Brilliantly devised, I gotta say. I was so blown away when I saw these images. Chris is very into the fact that the emotion and the tension is a delicate balance between the music and the sound effects. And that's one of the things that I think Ludwig does amazing. And you could tell by the way that the strings are being played, the aggressiveness of the way they're being played, the layers in which the, the, you know, the long strings, the short strings, the pizzicato strings are all layered on top of each other. He wants to get every bit of tension and emotion out of each scene that he can. And our job is really to help him achieve that. There's four forces in the universe, electromagnetism, gravity, the strong atomic force and the weak atomic force. And the strong atomic force is the strongest force in the galaxy. And Oppenheimer was imagining what that force would be like unleashed. So the idea was to con just to convey the enormous latent power in that force. like challenges. We like to be challenged. We like to be put to the test. And Chris has a, a way of doing that. When he's happy with the scene, it makes us feel really good because we know how important the sound is to him. And we're, it's a total collaboration. I never lose sight of the fact how humbled and grateful I am that Chris has involved me with this team. Music and sound design is a character within itself, which is incredible. So after watching the movie, I was so amazed by it, even though I worked on it, but I didn't know that it was gonna be like that. Yeah, I knew it was gonna be good, but you know, but Chris just knows how to put it together with the sound team. And I walked out of the theater saying to myself, this is a masterpiece. One of the reasons his films are so powerful is that they are full body experiences for the audience. He doesn't want them to just gauge the audience intellectually. He wants to engage them emotionally and viscerally and physically. So it's it's a very difficult goal to reach, really, and a very challenging goal to reach. That's why it takes the time, determination, skill, and persistence that it does. Mm -hmm. 